Good morning YouTube. So I just finished training shoulders right now so I'm taking a brief break to grab the camera so I can film the arm portion of this workout. So like I said my split in the past if you haven't seen the video it's chest and back, shoulders and arms and then legs. I do that twice a week so six training days of lifting and then I do three running days and that's why these Wednesdays that I do shoulders and arms and also run I feel like are fun to record because they kind of show how I balance everything, my timing, what those workouts really look like. So I'm about to train triceps and biceps. I'm gonna film that and show that to y'all, voice over it, and then catch up with y'all at the track when I do my speed workout for the day. So for my Wednesday arm workouts, what I typically do is three different supersets. So one tricep exercise and one bicep, always starting with the tricep since it's a bigger muscle group. Uh, tri meaning three heads and bi meaning two. So I always start off with that. And what I've been doing recently is a strong kind of cable push down because I feel like I get the most mind muscle connection. I can pump up the muscle. And by the time I get to heavier movements, uh, you know, shoulders and chest don't take over as much. I feel like I'm actually engaging the triceps better. So here I'm using this uh, new cable attachment that we got in about a month ago in the gym. I really like it because I can kind of push past my hips. Um, you know, instead of like a rope, you'd typically uh, get stopped a little bit earlier. So this really allows for a natural free range of motion. Uh, so knocked out. Uh, four sets of 15 actually reps with these. So I did four sets of 15 here, and then you'll see a run over and do concentration curls, which has been something I've never liked um, in my whole like lifting career the past like six years. But I kind of made it a point to uh, you know take my time, see what I what kind of form I do enjoy them with, and so it's kind of this naturally bent over, elbow tucked on the inside kind of form that I enjoy. And I'm doing sets of eight with this weight. This is a little bit heavier for me, but doing sets of eight, like I said, on each arm with this. And then after that, I moved on to close grip bench. Um, and like I said, I like doing that push down first. It might fatigue me a little bit, but by the time I get to close grip bench, I can really kind of engage the triceps how I want. Now with these, I do a couple things that are a little bit different than I guess the usual form. One, I keep my feet off because I just want to really engage my triceps. I don't want to worry about using uh, my legs or anything else. Two, I go kind of about shoulder width grip on here. So nothing closer because I don't really want to hurt my wrist or anything like that, but it is a closer grip for me. Um, I'm thinking about drawing those elbows in close around 45, a little bit closer, um, you know, close to my lats. And then I'm kind of actually treating it like a spotto press. So it's actually, uh, you know, an inch or two off my chest. I'm not coming all the way down. I'm also not fully locking out because I want to keep tension on the triceps and uh, not the elbow joint. So I'm supersetting these with just some simple barbell curls. Um, I've never been a huge fan of going too crazy heavy with these. So keeping it semi-light um, or moderate weight, I would say. I'm making sure I'm squeezing at the top, full stretch at the bottom, um, and avoiding any kind of unnatural swing. So it might be a slight sway, but nothing too crazy, not much momentum here. So doing sets of 10 on both of these exercises for four sets. And then I move on to the last super set, which is just dumbbell skull crushers on this bench. Really been enjoying these recently. Um, just a nice way to kind of blast the long head um, and stretch out those triceps. And then on biceps, I'm just doing a rope hammer curl, which I've always loved. I feel like I can really just blast the uh, brachioradialis as well as, of course, the biceps to kind of finish off the uh, arms here. I love doing a cable exercise for arms. And that's it for my arm day, so now I'm about to do two scoops, which is one serving of this homemade meal replacement, which has 46 grams carbs, 48 protein, 420 total calories. So a great kind of way to fuel up my muscles. Um, instead of like trying to have to pack a meal every morning, this has been super convenient, super helpful, and also tasty. So I'm gonna down that, and then in probably an hour or two, when Maddie gets here, I'm gonna down two English muffins and some honey on top of that, just to get some extra carbs in before my run, because this will hold me over for a little bit, but I don't wanna only have 400 calories in me three hours before my run. I like to have a little bit more food, um, especially since I'm about to do some speed work. So that's what I'm about to do, eat a little bit, do some work on the computer, and then I'll get out on the track. All right, so we're back here at the track, and it's gonna be mostly the same workout. I'm gonna try and film it on my phone because I realized it didn't charge my camera and it's about to die. But today's workout is six 400 meters instead of four from last week. Same 90 second rest period in between, um, and still that kind of same, at least 620 or a little bit faster pace as what I'm shooting for. So I'm gonna do a mile warm up, mile cool down, and then that meat and potatoes workout in between, and uh, I'll catch up with y'all after.
All right, so I ain't gonna lie to you. That was brutal. And it was the same thing as last week, just with two more 400 meters. And to be fair, I did a better job at timing my rest intervals this week. So last week, I probably was supposed to be 90 seconds, maybe got up to towards two minutes. Uh, but the first three 400 meters went well. I was about like a 607 kind of mile pace, faster than anticipated, kind of like last week. But after I did the fourth, I was like, oh God, I was so out of breath. I did the fifth and sixth, same deal. And for those intervals, I gave myself as much time as I needed. It ended up being probably about two and a half minutes in between. Uh, and even with that, I still ran like a 640 time pace. But uh, you live and you learn. So I think overall, my problem was overshooting my pace. A, in the workouts, when I was supposed to do a 620, running under that, I shouldn't. I should just stick to the actual pace, even if I can do faster the first few, because over time it'll beat you up. And two, I may have overshot my goal pace overall. Maybe I shouldn't be doing 620 out the gate. Maybe I should do 630 and then work my way down. So what I think I'm gonna do is the next two weeks, redo the past two workouts. So redo the four by 500, time my intervals on rest a lot better, and then redo this workout, and then try and hop on the following weeks that I planned on doing. But overall, not too bad. I pushed myself, so I'm proud of that. I'm gonna do my mile cool down and then I head home. So today's Friday the 5th. I just brewed up some fine coffee. So about to drink that as I get ready to train legs. It's a heavy deadlift day, so still working on that goal of pulling 500 pounds today. I think I'm doing 385 or 390 for sets of five, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I wanted to talk about my long run that I did yesterday. So you saw the clips of my speed work, tough workout. Kind of went as planned, but kind of didn't. Uh, overshot it a little bit. Um, and so going into yesterday's run, I wasn't really that sore, so that really wasn't a factor. Um, but I just didn't plan right. Because last week's long run was 10 miles. I think before it, I ate two bagels, left completely like from the gym straight to the run, got it done. It wasn't too bad. Um, of course, I was tired, but I wasn't overly fatigued. Yesterday, I had scheduled plan to do some photos with Griffin right after the gym, so did that. Um, and before that, all I had to eat was a protein shake, basically, and some Eggo waffles. And so by the time I was running, it was probably like two and a half hours since I ate, um, two and a half hours since I drank water. Even though I, I drank a decent bit in the morning, it wasn't enough. And then so running 12 miles yesterday when I was done, I was so sore, so fatigued, it was the most grueling, mentally challenging run I think I've ever had. And I've done 13.1, I've done 12 miles before, um, but this was just the, the worst to push through, especially the last mile, last two miles. Um, but I got it done, uh, and, you know, but when I went to go like eat food, I was like, oh, I need a lot of calories. Let me go to get a burger because you know we had this place earlier this week and I was like, let me do that. So got all this food. And halfway into the burger, I just couldn't eat anymore. I just felt so immensely fatigued. I could barely move. I was just exhausted. I couldn't even like eat my burger. I felt sick. So I was like, all right, let me just get home and lay down. So I got home. I lay down for like 20 minutes without anything. Drank some water. Finally got up, showered, ate some food. Finally ate some like good food too instead of burgers and stuff. I don't know why I thought I'd do that. But I did my morning smoothie, which you know consists of like oats, protein powder, uh, peanut butter, almond milk, some things like that. So got that in me, finally felt better. And later in the day I felt better, but um, I was so mentally beat and I think it was just purely malnutrition and dehydration. But that just tells me I need to plan better, move forward. Um, and so my body's a little sore today. And one thing that I've noticed is the way I've broken up my schedule. If you haven't seen that video, I'll try and remember to link it up at the top. If not, you can find it on my channel. Is kind of how I've broken up my lifting split and my running days. And the way I've done it is Wednesday, I do shoulders and arms workout, and then I do my speed work. Yesterday, since it's a full, it's the only day I don't lift at all. I do my long run, and then on Fridays, I hit legs. The problem with this is Wednesday, it's not that much volume, but it's still pretty intense on my lower body. And then Thursday is obviously not intense, but still a lot to, to like put on my, my hamstrings, my joints, my body overall. And then Friday, I go and do like train legs hard. And so it's kind of like three days in a row, I'm just hammering my lower body. And I feel like right now I'm, I'm managing and it's not taking too much off my deadlifts, but long term, I feel like I just need to focus on my recovery. So one thing I did buy is some Normatec 
uh, Pulse 2.0 leg boots. Um, and what those are going to do is kind of work through compression up my legs for I think typical sessions are like anywhere from 20 to uh, 60 minutes, but I'll try and utilize those after runs and leg days and try and help my body just recover a little bit better um, because a little bit more recovery means a little bit more output that I can put out there and also keeps me away from injury. So um, I'll talk about those and probably do a review eventually after I've used them for a while, uh, but just wanted to update you guys as far as like what I'm doing to kind of maintain uh, the output and the workouts I'm doing. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, like the video, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.